rest most of the starting lineup. Let's introduce you to who's here, though. Samuel Glasgow is in goal. Last year's goalkeeper, Tien Devonish, is on the bench. Jaleel Lewis will wear the armband. Keely Lawrence, Jassi Pinder, Cameron Burke, Ethan Chutman, Caden Robinson, Linaris Lionel, Daniel Jones, Adam Peer, and Darrell Garcia, the only survivor from the team last year that were crowned the league champions. Randolph Boyce sits on the bench. Well, when you look at the format, of course, it's the familiar 4-1-4-1 for St. Benedict's College. Of course, the likes of Jones and Burke, uh, you'd look forward and Garcia, played, at, uh, played a lot of minutes for St. Benedict's last year. You'd expect him to be the leader of this group that has been assembled. And I use the word group, of course, because we know so many players have been rested from the St. Benedict's lineup. Well, a bunch of men, they managed to keep seven of the players that were crowned Intercall winners last year in their starting lineup today. Let's tell you who they are. Of course, you see Christian Bailey most likely wearing the armband today. Tristan Edwards in goal, the secondary school's goalkeeper of the year. Johansi Arterton, Jaden Williams, maintain the defensive shape. Michael Shaves leads the attack. Logan M Mingo, Levi Smith from last year, and Shaheem O'Brien gets a look in this team that is led by Hudson Charles, the serial winner. Well, when you look at this lineup, Jaden Williams at the back, of course, getting some international experience at the national under-17 level for Trinidad and Tobago. Shaves leaves the line. Look for Christian Bailey to be the key man in the middle of the park for Fatima College. Started with the unity of the teams coming together. Blazing sunshine. This man, Jones, starting the party off, winning a penalty for St. Benedict's College. Against the run of play, you might argue. And Terrell Garcia got things started. First goal of the match on the penalty spot. That was 1 0. And then the Jones magic. Look at this. That was two. And at that point, you felt it couldn't get better until Pierce pass into Garcia. Perhaps the best goal of the match we saw. Made it 3-0 at halftime. Fatima College though refused to lie down. And Michael Shaves got them back early in the second half. Cutting the deficit to 3-1. And then Christian Bailey providing the assist for Shaves. St. Benedict's though looked shell-shocked at that moment. Fatima boys enjoying it. And, of uh, course, the motions and tensions boiling over Pierre being yellow-carded. And Fatima would give them the impetus to get a second. It was a substitute. Josiah Gobin. Pinball effect. After the Bailey pass. And Fatima College at that time was 3-2 in the contest. Everybody sensed that they might be coming back. But Garcia had other ideas. Getting rid of Williams and getting rid of the goalkeeper. He made it 4-2. And at that moment, you felt that St. Benedict would run away with it. Look at this, a magic individual brilliance. Williams nowhere to be found. And Edwards, a spectator, as that settled into the net. Hat-trick for Darrell Garcia. And his induction into the Hall of Legends. But then this, another substitute. This time, Luke Karaya pulling Fatima College back in the contest yet again. And that made it 4-3 at that point. Setting the stage for an interesting finale. But that was all she wrote because the final whistle ended a script that had St. Benedict College as the winners. Well, the sun is officially gone here but we're not gone yet as the numbers tell us the story of this match Fatima College 11 shots to 8 out shooting St. Benedict's College no shots on target in the first half well they got 8 in the second yellow cards just one in this match going to St. Benedict's College Adam Peer and possession Fatima College coming back 58% of the possession but losing the war in the end St. Benedict's College 4-3 and they are Super Cup champions but well, i tell you what 
my good friend Brent Sancho standing by, and he has the coach of Fatima College, Hudson Charles. Coach, an exciting yeah. game of football, well, certainly from a neutral perspective. What's your assessment on the 90 minutes plus? Um, I think the game was well played, you know, I mean, I hope the guys, the people who yeah, they, they enjoyed the game. I think, I, I think it was a game of uh, two halves, you know what I mean? And um, I thought St. Benedict's, you know, they really came out and, and, and they really played good, you know what I mean? They take their chances. Well, you did say it's a, a game of two halves. Yeah. What was said at halftime? Your team is down three goals. What was said in the locker room? Well, I tell them they have nothing to lose. <laughs> Just go out there and play. You know what I mean? And, and, and play for the... It's cool, you know what I mean? Let's go out there and play. You know what I mean? I think they certainly stepped up the game second half, you know what I mean? Of course, if you don't put away your chances, you know, you always go out there again. Well, of course, with the season starting this week, on yeah. Wednesday in particular for you, what do you take some of the positives out of this one moving into the season? I think, I think the fight and the attitude that, that when we was down three, you know what I mean? And... They came back out and, and, and they really come out and, and give me a good fight. I think I'll take that <laughs> in the next game on Wednesday. Thank you very much, Coach, and all sure. the best to you in the season. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> of course, now, Coach Boyce, you're a happy man. <laughs> What's your assessment on today's game? Uh, game at two half. Uh, we played better in the first half in terms of putting down the ball, possession, combination, going forward, taking our chances in the first half was more solid. Well, of course, uh, you were up 3-0 comfortably in the first half, and then second half, things started to go Fatima's way. Uh, what's your thoughts on what transpired in the second half, and what did you do differently in the first half? I th think it was decision-making, choice of pass, area in which we lose any ball. Pass. Fatima was pressing us higher up the field, and... A lot of errors and mistakes. I uh, think tired legs as well. Uh, a lot of the, the guys are young guys um, that we wanted to give the experience today to see how they would integrate with the rest of the fellas that didn't play today and going forward. Um, they have a, a bright future ahead of them, but we have some work to put in with them still. Of course, uh, the work that you talked about throughout the preseason going into the start of the season on Wednesday, the real football, as they say. Uh, how's your assessment and how do you look forward to it? Um, I would say pretty good. Um, we didn't get the opportunity to see any of the other teams that would be competing this year. Um, so we would have to take each game merit by merit and go step by step as we go forward. But we have a lot of positive going forward, tighten up defensively and we should be okay. Thank you very much coach.